Welcome everyone. So once we are done with today's module, you should be good enough to understand following points as in you would be able to identify and use inbuilt Java packages. The packages which we are going to see today are java.lang.io and .util. We are also going to study what wrapper classes are and then we are going to understand what collections framework is. We would also learn various data structures like array list, vector and queue and all those things. We would also learn what is a set, has set and a tree set. We would finally finish things off by learning what is map, hash map and hash table. So this pretty much covers our fifth module and this would pretty much wrap up our so-called sessions on Java essentials. So let us continue with the first topic of discussion. So object level locking. Now object level locking is nothing but a mechanism. What it lets you do is it lets you synchronize a non-static method or a static method or code block basically. And to do this, what you can do is you can just go ahead and use a single thread and that thread would give you an access to this block of code so that when you're using it, no other thread has access to it. This actually helps you ensure thread safety basically. That is the end purpose. Now, this so-called locking is available both on object level and on class level. Now, we know that object level locking would be used when we are using non-static classes. So when we get into something called as static data and we are concerned about static data thread safety, in that case, what we do is we use locking for so-called, uh, or we use uh, locking which is called as class level locking basically. We are also going to see something called as inbuilt Java packages. Now, to name a few, we have something called as Java IO, Java Lang, and Java Util. So let us start with Java.lang basically. Now it provides classes which are quite fundamental to Java. To name a few, we have something like byte, character, integer, long, float. Now all these are wrapper classes basically. Uh, as you can see, they start with capital letters. They are not your primitive integer type uh, or your primitive data types. They're basically wrapper classes. We would study what wrapper classes are, don't worry. Uh, we also have other classes such as we have something called as maths. We have string, string buffer, string builder. We have seen string out of this and little bit of string buffer as well. Uh, we have another class called as system. We have thread and exceptions, which we have seen already. So let us just go ahead and take a look at these classes one by one. Now, as the name suggests, math is something which is used to perform mathematical operations. Those are elementary operations. Say, for example, uh, your square root and all those things, exponential values, logarithm, uh, trigonometric functions and all. We have something called a string. Now, we did study string in our third module, if I'm not wrong, and we saw how you can perform string operations on given strings, and we saw like 10 to 12 different ways of doing it basically. Then we have something called as string builder, which is more or less like your so-called string, but it is mutable and uh, the changes do get reflected in the so-called builder. Then we have something called as string buffer. String buffer and string builder are both like your string, but your string buffer, as I told you, is mutable and it is thread safe. Your string builder is not thread safe. That is the only problem it has or the only difference is what I would say basically. We also have something called a system. Now it basically helps you with various input and output strings and errors that deal with it. These classes are basically class fields and methods which are used for standard operations, which I've already mentioned that is something like input and output and error output strings basically. We have something called as thread, which we saw in our previous session where we used a thread, which is nothing but a lightweight process basically. And the class which helps you use these threads are nothing but your thread class. Then you have something called as exceptions. Exceptions are basically used to handle unforeseen or few system behaviors or code errors, which are actually dealt or can only be dealt at runtime. And to handle those runtime errors, we basically those are runtime errors are basically known as exceptions and exception handling is something that lets you handle it. So exceptions class is the class which is used to perform all these operations basically. 
So let us now move further and try to understand what a wrapper class is basically. Now wrapper classes are nothing but as the name suggests, they wrap a given data type or a primitive data type which you cannot directly use into particular places in Java and represent it as more or less as an object. So that is what wrapper classes do. Let us move further and try to understand that. Now, since Java is an object-oriented programming language, sometimes it is required to send objects instead of primitive data types. In this case, what we do is we send wrapper objects instead. To give you an example, something in collections called as array lists. Uh, this is where you cannot use primitive data types. Instead, you have to use uh, your wrapper classes. Now, collections is something that we haven't studied till time, but as we move further, we would learn collections, don't worry. So if an integer or a character data is to be stored in collections, then its corresponding objects are required. Hence, wrapper classes are created. To give you an example, in this case, we have John again, who's all grown up and now he is trying to move to USA. So John is basically carrying his laptop with him to USA and when he goes there, he realizes that the charging portals which are there in USA are different than what we use or he uses in the country which he lives in. So basically what happens is he finds trouble getting his laptop charged. So in order to get his laptop charged, he has to use an adapter that kind of connects to the so-called charging portal and also suffices the needs of his laptop as well. So this so-called portal or the adapter rather is known as a wrapper class in Java. So there you have it. Uh, another use case or a scenario basically where John is in US now and he meets one of his friends whose name is Jack. Now they both are classmates and it's been long that they haven't seen each other so they're kind of happy to see each other. So they extend greetings and they get to know each other as it what they're doing currently. So his friend is probably working for some company called as Axison. Now that is a weird name to have but let's stick to that. And he's managed to learn Java is what he says. So he asks the same question to John as in what are you doing these days? So John tells him that he is also a programmer and is a trainer with some company called as Consusis, which is again a bad name and everything is great for him. So his friend Jack is kind of working on a particular project that deals with wrapper classes. But the fact that he's yet to start with it and he's not aware how wrapper classes work, he asks John as in what is it exactly? So John tells him that to give you an example, we have something called as a chocolate. Now a manufacturer will make sure that he wraps the given chocolate in a paper and then the chocolate gets manufactured so that when the user uses it, he unwraps the chocolate and then eats it. This so-called wrapping prevents it from dust. In simple way, we also use wrappers in Java classes as well or in Java as well. So these wrapper classes some more or less kind of wrap your so-called data types and give it an appearance of an object basically. So a wrapper class wraps a data type and gives it an object appearance. This object can be used wherever the data type is required as an object. Now wrapper classes also have methods that let you unwrap these objects and return the data type. Now these are the variants of your so-called uh, primitive data types. Uh, when I say variants, I mean the wrapper class variants. So the name remains the same. The only difference is we use capital letters basically. So all the primitive data types have wrapper classes in Java. So how is a wrapper class basically declared? It follows the following syntax as in integer i is equal to new integer and we pass in the value say 10. So what are the features of wrapper classes basically? Now we can use wrapper classes or class methods like converting integers to string and all those things. This is one way to store primitive data types into your objects and the value of is something that is available in all wrapper classes to get the value of given data into your so-called wrapper class data type. So this was about wrapper classes. Let me quickly just go ahead and give you a small program or a small demonstration of wrapper classes. So yeah, let us try to see a wrapper class demo basically. Um, it is very easy. Say I have my primitive types basically. Now to give you an example, I have say int i and I pass in a particular value to this int say 10. Now say I take in one more primitive type say character say ch or c maybe and I give it a value say a. Now what we'll do is 
we would first convert these primitive types into references. This process is also known as something called as boxing. And how do we do that? To do that, we've already seen a sample syntax. Now, since we are dealing with an integer primitive type, I would be using this word or uh, the keyword, say iref is equal to again new integer. And here, what you do is you just pass in the value, say 10 or not 10, i. Um, for the character, you do the same thing. Character say C ref and you pass in a value, say new, not pass in a value. Yeah, here is something you give in the name of your so-called character variable and which is C. So you have it. This process is called as boxing or converting so-called primitive types into references or objects. Now, can we get them back? Yeah, we can. So get the primitive out of the object. And this process is called as unboxing. So how do we do that? Take a variable, say int k, because we are dealing with integer, the name that is iref dot int value. There you go. And for character say character CHA and I say CREF dot value. There you go. So this somehow unboxes your so-called data. If you want to see the result, you say sys out. I'm just gonna go ahead and print the value, say the value that needs to be printed is k here and the value that needs to be printed here is CHA. So if I do go ahead and print these values, I would be getting my actual values back. Okay, what just happened? Please bear with me. Okay. There you go. So you have the actual values back as well. So this is nothing but unboxing your so-called objects into your data again. Now there is something called as autoboxing, where you let your system do it for you. Say for example, I have something called as long L, I pass it some value say 100 and what I do is I just go ahead and I do this. What will a system do here is basically it will convert your long L ref to new long L basically. And say for example, I have long m is equal to l ref. It will say long m is equal to l ref dot long value that is giving my value back. And this is something that is called as auto unboxing. So this was about rapid classes. Thank you.